yeah, I'm going to talk about um, some, I, I call it boring stuff, doing boring stuff in, in a, APL. Um, and by that, I mean some doing sort of dull day-to-day -day stuff that you probably reach for Python or Ruby or similar language or sort of quick and dirty sort of utility scripts. Um, and over time, um, I've sort of gradually rewritten a considerable chunk of my uh, utility scripts of this type from Python usually to, to APL. Um, and the purpose of this talk is, is a little bit, you know, to try and show some simple examples of how you can do so um, too, if, if, if you choose. Uh, and also perhaps explaining why APL might be uh, a good choice for this, uh, even if at first blush it might not seem that way. Um, um, compared to the, 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 the previous talks that, that, that you will have seen, um, I probably got to go a little bit further further into um, uh, um, sort of APL rather, rather than just the basics. So, but I'm not going to explain everything I do. Um, if you don't understand it, uh, it doesn't really matter exactly how things hang together. It's more—it's more trying to be sort of an illustration how you, when you get a little bit further on, along your APL journey, how you could use APL for doing things that you might not think it, it was sort of ideally simple to. Yeah. Um, and when you do start out in APL, it's easy to think that it's all about the maths, you know, the, the, the super tight numeric algorithms and array transformations, and and and. and don't get me wrong, this is sort of APL home turf, right? And it's sort of very good at that. Um, but at least in my job, um, the problem remains look very different. So sort of com the complexity that, that we encounter is generally from the data rather than the sort of the algorithms that, that you apply. You know, we, we deal in like dirty, incomplete, convoluted data, perhaps fused from multiple sources. And this data in general needs to be cleaned up and perhaps aggregated in some way. But actually, if you look at the algorithms that 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 we apply, um, it's rare that we do anything more sort of complex than sorting and sums and, and, and searching and that sort of stuff. You know. Um, so perhaps you need to pull some data from a logging aggregator like Splunk, which is a third-party logging logging ag aggregator. That's it seems it's quite complicated, or something like Grafana. Um, Grafana is another one of those those things where where, where you sort of put together lots of uh, the logs from different different systems and then then to do uh, visualizations and, and that sort of stuff. Grafana usually ends up being like super messy, um, really. Um, or maybe you need to query some sort of niche key value store and, and let that be known that there are certainly plenty of those. Yeah, and 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 perhaps combine the results sets in some ways. You get data from here. You get lots of data from DynamoDB and some Mongo and, and, and some uh, foundation DB or whatever it be, and then you need to sort of combine that into, into, into a wholesome whole. Um, so why would you choose APL instead of something like, like Python for this? It's sort of Python might, might perhaps be the, 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 the your, your, your first choice. Uh, but as it turns out, like APL has a, um, you know, some advantages that, that once you manage to get your data in, in, into the session, um, it's actually a pretty convenient place if you want to carry on working with it beyond the, 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 the sort of the function that, that you, your program exposed, yeah. Um, so get the data in and then you can use the richness of the, the, the sort of uh, APL primitives to um, sort of further messaging or querying or, or, or um, aggregating whatever it is that you want to do. So, I'm going to try and show you a super simple example that uses a single data source, in this case, CouchDB. Um, and our little application, honestly, it won't really do that much beyond fetching and displaying the data uh, as it is stored in, in, in CouchDB. And for our purposes here, all we really care about is that CouchDB uh, exposes an uh, HTTP API that responds with JSON. Um, and as such, it could really rep represent, could be represent uh, a whole class of, the, of all these data sources that you probably deal with. They generally speak HTTP and they respond to JSON. So it could be anything. Um, for completeness then, um, I'm running a, a local CouchDB single node in a Docker container on this machine. And it's got this following uh, sort of magic uh, incantation but for, for how it got started. Um, and it's got like a, uh, a management cons console that lives on on sort of uh, underscore utils and, and on on the uh, CouchDB port, which is 
on, on, on local host, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So to set the scene, and, and uh, this scene is, is sort of related to the, 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 the job that I do currently. Um, so we're, we're the provider of a, of a, a sort of cloud database service that, and, and users can sort of purchase capacity uh, um, for, for their compute and, and storage needs. And as the provider of this, uh, what we need to do is, is to provision a bunch of servers, we call them nodes, database nodes, and group those into, into clusters of different sizes. And, and each, each, of this, each, each of these clusters that can sort of host a set of uh, customer accounts. Um, but each account resides on, on, on a single cluster. And, and each user has a capacity plan, which is this thing that we sell. Um, and many of these users um, can, have this, can happen to be on the same plan. plan yeah? so, so, so I've got a simple sort of relationship diagram you know, how, how these three, I mean, if, if it was a relational database, these, these would be tables you know, and they have a couple of foreign keys that, that link these things together. So, but, <laughs> Cluster as many users, a user has a single uh, plan, but the plan can belong to multiple users, etc. Um, and here's an example of, of, of one of these documents. Um, um, so, so this is the um, uh, a user document. Yeah. So you can see it's basically just JSON in, in, this, in this case stored in, in uh, CapturedDB. Uh, and honestly, it doesn't really have that much. It's got a, a sort of UUID type ID, uh, it's called underscore ID, and it has a, a reference to the cluster uh, upon which it, this account resides. It's got these plans, which is a, this capacity plan, and this this particular one is on the free plan, um, a date on there. So it doesn't really matter what, what goes in here so much. Um, similarly, and then the clusters, um, this is a description then of the sort of metadata that describes a, a cluster has got a certain number of uh, database nodes nine in this case got a certain number of load balances two in this case etc this is a multi-tenancy uh, uh, cluster we so we have multi-tenancy clusters and then we have clusters that belong to a single customer they still have multiple accounts on them we to single customer We've got a region in this case is frankfurt um yeah. and finally the plan document then for the, for the last one and, and that basically just defines some through parameters we have only three of these plans, um, um, which the uh, free, um, paid, and custom. So it matters less exactly what they are. So um, let's write a little bit of code here then uh, to, to sort of um, uh, implement this. And I'm going to drop it, drop into the session, and then we can have a look. Um, so what we're going to do. Um, is build this little sort of full chest or whatever you want to call it as, as a set of user commands. Um, and a dialog user command um, is a sort of convenient way to package up a little bit of APL code that you, you write and that you can then run in the session similar to something, you know, I think it's sort of uh, similar to how you, you would interact with uh, a command line interface on, on, in, in the shell, but sort of inverted. So sort of in the, in the in the session instead, yeah. and in in dialogue, these um, they uh, these use commands start with a square bracket. Um, if I go into here, um, so you, you start start with a sort of closed square bracket, and you can see if I type one, you get like a, a sort of autocomplete thing that, that shows with, with some of the, some of the ones that, that that happen to be available. Um, and you know, you will probably seen several of these already, um, like like like. Um, Display or wrapper or or my my, my current favorite, which is uh, Apple Cart, um, which queries the uh, uh, fine Apple Cart service that you probably come across, uh, which will give you some examples uh, of, of smart use. Um, it will go away and, and it will uh, turn something back. And, and this basically, you can imagine that that this Apple Cart user command is sit, sits somewhere as, as, a, as, a, as a bunch of APL code that gets run uh, when I, when I do this. Um, but there's actually, um, in a you know, wonderfully recursive uh, fashion that there's a user command that makes user commands. Um, so it's called um, you knew, yeah? Who knew? You knew. Um, and 
Let me just give it a name. Um, and, and what it will do, it will scaffold out um, sort of the minimal, the, the, min, the minimal sort of uh, user command uh, code that, that, that you need. Um, so if you look at this, what it does, as you can see that it's created three functions, list, run, and help. And these, these are trad functions uh, you, you may, may, may or may not have come across. Um, the, the, the sort of list function is, 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 is a way that sort of, you know, it, it describes the, the functionality that, that, um, that, 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 uh, that, that we export. And the, uh, the run uh, function is the dispatcher. Uh, it it take, gets a string uh, from the sort of command line, uh, and then it sort of matches that to, to, to um, uh, the function that, that you want to call, it executes the function and, and returns the results. And help then is the sort of um, multi-layer um, sort of documentation uh, for, for this. And, um, now, in order for this to function, we actually only need the list and the run. Um, help is kind of optional, but but the fully fleshed out use command should really implement all three. But I'm actually going to start. Um, I'm going to get get rid of all that scaffolding. Um, and I'm going to start again um, and, and sort of build it up. Yeah, and we're going to call this seeds. Um, um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some sort of boilerplate, and it's not really important. Uh, I will explain it, but it's not really important how these things hang to hang together. Uh, it's, it's, it's not the um, sort of purpose of this um, uh, talk so much. Yeah. So so I'm just going to co copy in some. Uh, some functions and definitions here and go through them a little bit more line by line. Um, um, so the first thing that we're gonna need is the um, dialog uh, HTTP client uh, library. Um, that's called HTTP command and, and it, it gets loaded in, in, in this way programmatically. And I, I'll call it HC for HTTP command. Um, and I'm going to need the, the base URL for because when you talk to um, um, CacheDB, everything is a URL. And, 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 uh, and we're obviously running this locally. So it's just going to be localhost and then the, the, the standard CacheDB port. Um, um, the next thing we're going to do is think of a way of, of sort of authenticating. So, so CacheDB has different ways of authenticating. And we're going to use the, the, the sort of the, the simplest form, which is. Uh, uh, Basic HTTP auth, uh, which is basically using a, a credential. I'm going to actually going to store this in um, my credentials in a file. Um, got seeds. It's basically just a, a sort of properties file. So it's got like a section, um, which which is uh, like, like this, and it's got like key values uh, separated by uh, uh, by, an, by an equal sign. Here. And as you can see here. I have an ultra set, ultra, ultra secure set, set of credentials here. And obviously, if you did this for real, you probably both choose a different mechanism and, and definitely some better credentials. But it's not what we're here for. Um, so what I have then is this hideous function here called dot seeds. It's designed to read that particular file. Um, and it's uh, an unholy mess of, of regular expressions and, and uh, uh, JSON file. Uh, Passing and it's not important how that works, but basically what it will do, um, it will read that file and spit out a, a, a handy namespace that, that has these key, keys and values in it. We don't have the auth function. Um, it takes a user and a, uh, username and a password, um, and it creates the HTTP uh, authentication header um, for, for basic, basic auth, and that that uh, we can feed into uh, HTTP command. Um, it's pointed out to, to me after I wrote this that, that uh, there are more elegant ways of doing uh, auth in, in uh, HTTP command nowadays, but I decided to stick with this for, for, uh, um, for, for this purposes. Yeah. So if you know how HTTP headers work, uh, it's probably uh, pretty clear what, what that does. I then load up the creds here using this function and, and this file. And so this creds is now a namespace um, that has these, uh, uh, my, my authentication, admin and admin. Um, and then um, I create the header um, that I'm going to feed in, in into every uh, HTTP request. That, that, that make. And then I have this PP function. Um, and this might seem a bit silly, um, but basically, I'm going to make a I'm going to make requests um, uh, over HTTP to uh, CacheDB, and 
it comes back as JSON, but HTTP command will will do some very neat tricks to to convert that back in, in into into uh, uh, APL uh, formats. Yeah, it would be namespaces and you know, part past JSON if you like. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm immediately going to flip that back to JSON to a JSON string again. But that's just for this this demo. Now, that that means that we have a way of dumping it out, uh, printing it essentially. Um, so we can see that that, but you have to imagine that that we do something it's something uh, you know more relevant. Yeah, you know? like, like if you did this for real, you you, you wouldn't you wouldn't bother doing that. Yeah, you, know? you, you you take what gets back from uh, uh, HTTP command and and you feed it into your sort of processing pipeline, whatever that might be. So with that, um, we then sort of get ready to 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 implement the, the, the implement this. Yeah, so. I'm going to do six um, six user commands here. Uh, yeah, I think, um, and the first three are, are sort of singular versions, and then they'll have the, sort of the name of a document in 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 in, in each, each of these sort of databases. Yeah, so we'll have a, a plan, a, a, um, a user, and and a, a, a cluster thing, and and basically what that will do, it will take the ID of one of these documents and, and fetch that one document. Yeah. So they're basically the same thing. Uh, it's just a single HTTP request fetching a single document based on on um, on, on sort of um, the, 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 pr the primary key, right? Um, so that they, they should be they should be simpler. So, so let's let's implement the, the sort of business logic first, yeah, which is uh, uh, very very simple. Yeah. Um, So this then is the plan. Yeah, so it fetches a single document, uh, and uh, we use these the sort of convenience uh, uh, function get JSON in inside HTTP command that basically will set the relevant headers so that you can you, know, you, you can expect the uh, 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 JSON content, um, and it will also make make uh, pass the JSON uh, that comes back. But I immediately then, as I said, uh, converted back uh, to to a JSON string, really like pretty printed uh, that, that we can like that we can just uh, um, sh show in the session. Yeah. Um, this curious thing here um, that, that you can see here, and you can see that I'm I'm sort of signing um, a, a reference here yeah, to, to to the underscore um, uh, variable. Yeah. So. We, we basically keep keep a, this reference around pointing to the root namespace and and this is a good idea uh, when, you, when you're dealing with uh, HTTP command because it avoids a, a sort of pathological problem in in, in dialogue um where it's a bit hard to explain but reference that keep parent parent namespaces uh, alive um without a sort of external reference um Sort of send the interpreter off in, in a bit of a tailspin, trying to determine whether the last reference and has been removed. Yeah, um, and if that makes no sense, um, don't worry. Uh, there's no reason why you would know that, and, and I, for some, I certainly didn't know about it until I stepped on that particular landmine the, 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 the first time. Yeah, um, in these simple cases, it'd probably be alright without, um, but it's sort of good, good, good practice to get used to. Um, so. The core of the user command is then there are these list and run functions, and list specifies the um, the sort of commands uh, that, that 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 we, we expose here. Um, details such as the uh, the number of command line parameters, and then and, you know types, what type they are, and then that sort of thing. And then run then is the dispatcher. Uh, so let's first consider the um, the kind of list function. Um, so I'm going to uh, just to do the simplest thing here. Um, Um, so I have a little, so, so, the, so list returns a list of namespaces um, uh, that, that has a certain uh, field set. Yeah. So I'm using a little uh, convenience helper here to generate one of these uh, namespaces. Yeah. Um, so it has four fields, one, two, three, four, name, which is the name that the name uh, the, this command will take. Uh, the group that it belongs to, um, and this is the, this, the, the name of this namespace here, the, the, the seeds here. Um, the description, which is the, the, the sort of top level of, of, of help, if, if, you, if you like, yeah. And 
this thing called parse, which which describes the the, the parameters that we put in take in. Um, so the main one that we need to be concerned about is this part parse variable here. Yeah? So this list function then um, just basically defines a single uh, uh, um, thing of, the, of, the, of this type, the single single namespace uh, returns return as a list. Um, and it's called plan, it's in the seeds uh, group. Um, and the way that we call it is we say the plan and then the name of a plan. And then we describe the, the, it, its parameters. In this case, it's a one because it's a, you know, one, one command and S for, for something that's string like. Um, so recall that, that I don't know whether I did say this or not, uh, but, but when we pass parameters to, to use commands, we're no longer dealing with, with sort of APL syntax. It's, it's a sort of, sort of passing strings and, and, and stuff. Yeah. So, so um, we can't use this sort of the, the, the APL expressions in the same way as, as we used to when, when, we call, when we call these things. What we need now then finally is the run function to dispatch. Yeah. So it gets fed a string um, and it will then need to sort of look up that, that string and then sort of call the, 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 the corresponding function. Yeah. Um, so let's try that. So we have uh, run, so it takes a command and some and a sort of a vector input. Um, vector and input, and we just do basically a switch statement here. And if the string that that we get fed is plan, we call this plan function that we just wrote up here. Um, and it takes a single um, um, a, a, a single a single parameter. So we look in this input uh, namespace, and we would take the, the the first one, and then from the arguments, and that that's it yeah so um hopefully um we should now have something that we can demo uh, and the the god of demos is, is 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 kind to us we should be able to say now actually good thing i remember like what we need to do um is we need to tell the, the session that we made a change here so we need to say you reset Actually says, I've made some changes to to, to these. Yeah, um, please reload them you know, and, 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 and load them into the command cache. Yeah. So now we should be able to say seeds. Yeah, so it, it shows up there, which is nice. And if I if I just type a dot, it will show me everything that the list function uh, uh, sends back. Yeah, which is plan. Um, and the plans were free, paid, and custom and so we can say free like what does that look like yeah so we get back some some json coming back there and and um that certainly looked like like uh that thing that, that, that was stored in the database yeah so now you have to imagine like well i didn't actually convert it back to to uh a character uh a character vector and then can do something with this as, as it came back but... okay um so let's go back into our closed it. Um, uh, seeds. No. There it was. Uh, right. Okay. That was good. Um, so we, have, so we have two more of these these things that basically does the same thing, right? right? Like so, so, so they only differ in 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 the sort of um, the URL, really. Uh, so, so we can just basically um, copy them, copy those in here. So that's for the cluster um, and the, uh, the, the the user fields, yeah. and they're, they're, so you can see they're they're identical, yeah. So, so if we you know if we're smart about it, we could uh, probably. Um, um, Combine them in, 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 a, in a better way, right there. Um, and then these things here then will, will basically uh, from the add to the list, and yeah, they, they will also look exactly the same. Uh, just just changing a little the, the name. Get back a bit nicer. And then similarly for. Um,
um, the dispatcher. Um, need two more of these case statements here. Yeah. That's look at the time. So, um, let's get rid of just on that. Um, so now, um, if you do you read that um, and then seeds. So now we have that, that those three on our, on our turning up, which is nice. Um, so cluster. Oh, what was the cluster name? We don't know that, do we? Uh, let's have a look in the database here. Uh, I just already logged me out there. Uh, and then, so in the clusters, uh, we can take ICP, and I want to generate these names. Um, so if I now um, do this, we can get, get uh, um, a particular cluster, this one in Frankfurt. Um, and similarly then for completeness, if we go back to the users, these are just UUIDs, yeah. So just take take one of those guys. Um, yeah. Um, to use to, yeah. Okay. So that's those three. Um, the 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 the, the singular versions of uh, of uh, of this, right? So. The plural ones. Um, so we have two different flavors of these. Yeah. So, so if I want, if I say plans, and um, with no arguments, and uh, then uh, what I want is, is to get basically a list of the names of, of, of all the plans. So basically, we'll just traverse the whole database and, and, get, and get all the, all the primary keys, all the primary index. Um, and we can do the same for, for the clusters. There's only a handful. Well, I think it was 25 clusters or something like that that I generated. Um, so we'll just spool through the, 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 the primary index as well and get, get, get those things. So those two, those two are similar. The last one, the, the last plural version, the users one, we can't meaningfully do that one could, but, but um, because there's, I think it's, there's 10,000 users on, on, on here. So it so will just be similar. So, so uh, with that one, what we're gonna do is we're going to allow the user to specify a, a, a list of clusters, a subset of, of, of the clusters, saying like, I want to see all the counts or the users names basically on one or more clusters and have those grouped by cluster. And then that can come back here. So, um, so let's look at, at, at that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so let's start with the plans. So it basically, you should go through. Um, so this will be a NILADIC function. Um, so it won't take any any, any arguments. You know, basically say, give me the, the all the contents of, of this particular uh, database. You know, um, so we'll stick this this one here. Um, so again, we start off with um, basically uh, hitting the primary index and of, the, of the plans database, and and this isn't the backcache DB, but this is how you do it. You, you call it on the, the sort of the underscore all docs. Um, which is the name of the primary index. And I'm giving it an, an sort of optional argument here to, to include the, 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 the actual data, not, not just the, the, the names here, but, but I'm gonna feed, feed back then. And just sort of um, show a little bit of what, what you could do when, when you're doing this thing, I'm gonna do a, a sort of token calculation, a to token aggregation here when, when it kind of come, uh, comes out. So I'm gonna find the, the I'm gonna look, look into the, the, the kind of throughput uh, the, the read uh, throughput. I'm going to divide that by hundred uh, to give sort of um, uh, kind of read unit, uh, and I'm, I'm going to return that as a as a sort of two line table, if, if, if you like, like, like that maps the uh, uh, the names and and and, and the name of the um, of this plan and, 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 and these, these units, yeah. But the, the, the calculation itself is kind of neither here nor there right now, you're kind of meaningless. Um, um, so for the list function then, 
so this is an elladic function which you, 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 you can only do in uh, in, in trad funds um, so we can stick stick that one on here um, but you kind of get the idea so it's the, the, the plural one um, then if you look at the pass field here it's, it's just empty and then so it's an empty, empty string so it means it, it takes no no, no, um, no, no parameters no, you call it um, And if you look at the uh, see here, um, so basically, it plans yeah, we just return actually and transpose it to to, to flip, it, flip it the other way around for for for, for better presentation. I think, I think yeah. Um, so let's uh, look at that. So remembering that we need to reset. You can see this number here goes up, yeah. So that's that, that, that's that's hopeful because it's sort of compiled it. Um, check check my syntax at least. Uh, you know, if, I, if I get an error, it it, it won't go up. Yeah, it does happen. Um, so now we should be able to say seeds dot plan with an S, yeah? and then we get back. You know, there was only three uh, three of them, and custom free and paid are the same. Uh, Divided by 100, yeah. So we call that the unit, the read unit, or whatever. Um, the um, the next one, um, the clusters, is basically then the, the same thing, but with a what well, same idea anyway. Um, but we're going to do a, a, this a, a, a small token twist to, the, to this. Um, this time. Um, we have, even though it's still a small amount of data, but there's there's quite a lot of um, um, information. If we if we dump if we, if we fetched all the documents, yeah. So, so what we're going to do is then only take the names, and the idea being that that you can use this to list this list the names that then then if you want to dive in and, and then you can use the, the singular version to to sort of hone in on, on the ones that you're interested in. Um, so you can see here when I'm still hitting the the primary index. But I'm not including the, the the documents themselves, so I'm only going to look in the in the, the sort of uh, in, index itself. Um, now, the the slight complication here is that is that in CouchDB, a secondary index this contains secondary in, in indices this this particular database here, and they're just documents uh, that go into the same um, in, into the same database here. So if you were to just pull through the the, um, the primary index, you'll get the, the um, you get the index definitions as well, which, which we want to avoid. Yeah. And, and basically what I'm doing here, the index definitions all start with an underscore. So basically I'm just sort of going through what I got back then, the, the IDs here, and I'm just skipping everything that, 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 starts, that starts with an underscore. Um, so that one should look remarkably similar to, uh, this is gonna be, uh, clusters, and that's also an elladic. Um, 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 that's called clusters. Can type. Just this and that. Do that. Um, so seed stop. Oh, what did I forget? Yeah, I forgot to reload it. Uh, Stefan, we have uh, one question here that seemed appropriate for clarification. Jeremy asks I'm yeah. assuming that custom, free, and paid are contained in the JSON. Is that right? Maybe yeah, we can look. Um, let me um, let me show that. Um, and, uh, so if I go into here, so if we look at the plans, so you can see here that this the custom free and paid are basically basically just in the the primary key uh, for for these documents. So so it's the name. Uh, 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 the the underscore ID in in, in cache to be is is the, is the it's just a string. Uh, it the the only um, 
requirement is that it's unique. Yeah? You can either leave it out and, and CacheDB will generate one for you, just give you some uh, random URD. Or if you know already that that's your uh, that you have a unique key, uh, you can you can you can type it in yourself. So in this case, what I've chosen to do uh, is just use the name of uh, of, of these plans, as, as I call it, yeah, as as the as the primary key because I know it's, it. I I I chose them, so I know I know that that that, that they're going to be unique. You know? um, so if you already that like like as an aside, if you, if you're dealing with uh, not just Cache DB, but the Mongo DB is the same, and, and, and Dynamo DB is the same. Yeah. Like if you if you already have a unique sequence of of, uh, of, of something that, that, that you use, if you like, if you already have a customer ID or whatever that, that, that you know unique that comes from a different system, you can you can you can use that as um, um, as your primary key uh, in these kind of document stores as well, and um, and it allows you to do some some nice stuff like that. You can encode things in, in, in the primary key like, like that. You can you can get some lookups for free, but but it's sort of beside the point. Um, um, I hope that I find that, uh, but that's basically what it says. But actually, if I, if I um, um, what did I do now? Let's see, um, curious. If I break something, yes, I haven't done. I wrote it. Copied it, pasted it, but not see back to something that works. Yeah. So these then so they're basically that first column there is just the um, the primary the primary key of each document. Yeah. Um so for clusters. Then just gives you um, display here. Just gives you basically the, the just the, just the names of these. And, and my thinking there was, um, yeah, if if I I just I keep these in my head. And actually, I, I, which one was this? Probably that one. I wanted to check, and I can then just say um, these the just uh, name of that. Yeah. That feels like the kind of idea, yeah. Um, now then, the last one then, um, which is the users. Um, so I want the users, when you, when you call the users, I want you to specify a subset um, of, 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 of the cluster names. Um, so for this, um, we can't really meaningfully, as I said, spool through the primary index, uh, at least not if we can display it. You know? And there might maybe many, many thousands of these. And, and really, um, if we only wanted to sort of filter on the on, 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 on sort of cluster name, that we can do this in, in many different ways. Um, now, one way could be what could be to sort of grab the whole the whole data set and then do the, the filtering on, on on the sort of APL side. Um, now, this isn't such a great idea though because it, it will cost us on 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 all sides here. It will be like extra CPU load on the database. It will be network data volume had to transfer if you pay for that, and then um, and it will be some kind of CPU usage on on the APL side. Um, so better than to sort of create a secondary index on the database. I mean, this is what the database does when um, um, that sort of maps the cluster ID to user ID. And, and again, this wasn't supposed to be about CacheDB, but, but I, can, I can show you what what what, a, what a, an, um, um, one of those uh, secondary indexes look like. Um, so if I go into here, 
call it view, and, and, and in case we speak, and then basically a view is just a, a little snippet of, of, of JavaScript. Yeah? And this is sort of uh, a reverse lookup table. I don't actually project anything into the index. It's basically just saying, you know, I'm just mapping the, 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 the cluster name, that that becomes the key in the, in, in, in the, in the index, really. And I, haven't, I, I don't really care. Yeah, you know, we, we, get the, we get the document ID for free. Yeah? So, so this is the smallest possible reverse lookup table that, that, that you can do. And, and if we go back to, um, to here, um, uh, this one, uh, uh, so this is the output of the, of the index here. As you can see here, there's no value, the value here, there's nothing in the index. All we have is a key, but you get the, the sort of document ID is kind of tagged onto it anyway. So, so you can see here that they're not grouped on this, um, and, and this is sort of, simple case here in, in um, um, that, that we can just look for all, all the keys and we'll get them grouped coming, coming back, which is exactly what we want. To, uh, um, so this would be uh, you know, fractionally more, more, more complicated. Yeah? Um, so we basically need our function, our user's function, it needs to take a vector of cluster names and return the list of, of, of kind of user IDs and, and cluster IDs uh, in, in, in some way. Um, um, just, just one, let's take that one here. And as you can see, um, I'm sort of writing the, uh, you know, some of the, the ones that aren't in the ladder, you, you can write it as a deep one if you, if you prefer. Yeah. Um, so I'm starting off with like getting the, the, the cluster names and then I'm just making sure that, that um, we have a vector of, the, of those if you, um, in, in case, because it needs to function for with the single one as well. Um, and then this is how you call uh, the, the, the secondary index. Um, and this time what we need to do, we obviously need to tell the, the, the index query that, that it's, it's got some parameters in. So we need to tell CouchDB what to the keys in, in the index that, that, that we're interested in. Now, there's two ways of doing that. You can either tag it onto the URL, um, but you need to be really, really careful if you do that because the URLs come with a certain max length and, and, and stuff like that. And, um, but we can also pass it if we do a, um, if you do a post instead of get uh, we can, we, in, to cache DB, uh, uh, we, we can sort of encode the parameters in, in the body of the, of the, the request, which is, uh, so it's a slightly more industrial strength way of doing it. And the way that you do that in um, um, HTTP command is, is that you, you, you create a sort of namespace um, that holds the, 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 the kind of parameters. Um, and the parameter in, in our case is called keys. And so we just assign in the keys to this new uh, params, uh, namespace in, inside this uh, params namespace. And then we feed this params uh, namespace to uh, the request that we make and then making sure that we do a post rather than get. Um, and then we get uh, something that's more convoluted, the, the JSON that comes back, uh, we'll get an array called rows. Each of those um, uh, lines in that array is itself a, a sort of uh, JavaScript objective, like a, 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 a um, corresponds to sort of a name, name, namespace on the APL side. And we, we're interested in, in just the, the key and the ID. Um, and then again, we're gonna flip, flip that um, into, into, into um, a matrix. Um, now then, so this now takes a variable number of uh, parameters. Um, Users and then basically saying like, okay, we 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 want at least one, um, and up to ninety nine yeah. uh, in this case. So, so it's like one or or more uh, cluster names that that, that that we're gonna pass to to this user command, um, and then um, here.
case uses um, gets um, and so in, in all these others why we we have either taken the, the first one or none uh, of, of these uh, commands in this case we need to we need that, that, that all of them like, like everything that, 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 that the user gave us yeah so let's see um if that works and um, okay uh so now we should be able to say seeds dot user set it appears yeah right so we need some clusters then like uh let's, let's do that one first i can't remember what they were there um clusters so let's find all the, the, the uses on other. We can see the name and convention. <laughs> Seeds, users, and ICP CC naught, and ICP CC setting. Um, well, maybe that's a bit verbose. Output to me. So as you can see, like you, you get them back now, and they're 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 neatly sort of grouped by, um, by cluster ID uh, first. Yeah, so you like first all the ones from, from uh, CC naught, and then get all the ones from on, on CC CC thirteen. Um. So, with that, then um, I was thinking of just sort of wrapping this up a little bit. Yeah. So, the dialog user commands here yeah, is a pretty convenient way, a convenient wrappers for for functionality that that you know, that you want to reuse, you know, or run more than once. And they're pretty. I, I hope I've shown shown that at least once you get a little bit more sort of um, APL experience that they're, they're actually pretty easy to write. It's pretty sort of boilerplate, you might like how it hangs together. And then they allow you to bring data sets in, into the uh, APL session for, for further processing in, 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 in this, um, you know, pretty, pretty neat way, I think. And, and dialogues, HTTP command and quad JSON um, um, function they're, they're actually very nicely put together uh, I, I think and, and and they make dealing with remote JSON data sources a breeze even even if you might not automatically think of APL as as, as your sort of first stop for doing doing that, that, that kind of processing yeah um and as a as a sort of more anecdotal data point and and you know one of my Python applications of this type uh, I sort of counted it and then it, Kind of runs to about five thousand lines of Python, um, and the APL user command version of the same thing came out at just under three hundred. And it's not an entirely fair comparison. That the, the Python code does a little bit more, and it's a little bit more sort of careful with logging and authentication and, and error handling and, and that sort of thing. But, but still, I think it's um, um, few lines. Uh, you can, you can you know, and this is the, the sort of eternal. Uh, argument about but this like like you know, if you have more compact code you know, it's, it's, you know you can see more of it at, 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 at the glance and then you know some people think that that leads to fewer bugs you know, your your mind may, may vary but um i have been um pleasantly surprised actually how, how nice it is to work in in, in apl doing this sort of stuff yeah, stuff that no one else is, you know, needs to see. When, like it, it, it's stuff for me that, like, I, I have a, a problem to solve. Get some some crappy data together, and and and, and someone asks for it for uh, for some of the results back. So, uh, have a go uh, at, at using APL this way. Um, I don't know if you can see the Q and A, but I'll read these out anyway. So one is, hey Stefan, you mentioned you moved quite a few of your shell or otherwise scripts over to user commands. Um, this question is about workflow. Do you do most of your cloud-related tasks from within an APL session, uh, kind of like someone would live in a terminal most of the day, like a web dev DevOps, or 
you know, maybe closer related to like an Emacs user <clears throat> would use that. Um, yeah. Sure. Uh, and and that is an excellent question indeed. I I, I think it, and actually when I discovered or or, or in these um, user commands, I thought that you know my, uh, fairly early on in, in my my um, APL journey, I thought, my God, everything is backwards, back back to front and and, and, and inside out, and um, and it is inside out. But like in in a, in a way, like in in any other language, like Python or, or stuff, like like you would have like a nice command line um, parsing library, and and you would expose this into the shell, and and you you would you would interact things with with the, the sort of Unix command line shell, and then tie them together with with uh, pipelines or, 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 or whatever to, to do your, to your processing and this is exactly the opposite this is inverted you know? this is this is a, a sort of session centric view of, of this and I, I in, the, in the beginning I thought my god this is so backwards um but actually whenever I feel something like that what I try to do is, is sort of put those feelings aside saying like okay this must have been done for a reason and, and actually what I find myself doing um I want this data. I want this data in, in in the session, yeah. Because someone's asked me a question. Hey, can you tell me, you know, how many of this uh, combined with that, you know, and, and the, with that uh, with the unit unit price of this? And normally, you probably like pipe it into a database and 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 and, and do do uh, do some um, processing there. But actually, it's actually quite convenient uh, of doing this. And I'm finding myself, you know. Um, Against my will at the time, perhaps yeah, like like spending more time in 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 the session, in in the interactive mode in in, in the session. So so, um, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing that that like um, that you could do the other way in, in APL as well, like having some you know industry strength command line processing, so you can do this this sort of shell scripting in, in APL as well. But I think um, I, I hear noises that that might happen uh, anyway. So I don't know whether that explains the the, the question. Um, I think so. Um, and yeah, go on one more. Do do you sometimes use APL on the raw data to provo to perform complex aggregations or filtering? So in, uh, is that instead of yeah, for example, writing complex SQL queries on a relational database? But then you you did mention a cost factor um, that's mentioned here as well. So yeah, yeah maybe I mean mix and match or. So, 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 so one of the things that 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 uh, I think yes is 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 the answer. But actually, doing, I mean, I, I come from that that you know, I work in sort of NoSQL stuff uh, databases. Yeah, you know, the worst thing with with NoSQL databases, um, NoSQL. Um, actually, the SQL is a very nice language to do aggregations, and and and, and actually, what what I would probably do uh, instead of writing the, these big Python things, uh, I will probably just pipe it into uh, SQLite and 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 actually do, 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 use uh, SQL to do things. Uh, and actually, many things or well, most of the things that you can do in in SQL, you can do in APL too. Yeah, you know? it, it's you know it, it's basically just sets, right? Um, but SQL has the advantage that everybody knows it. Like everybody who's been to to uh, university in the last thirty years or, or will have been exposed to it if they study computer science, right? Um, so it's it's um, I, I I I I find I find it uh, an interesting challenge yeah, to 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 translate SQL in, in, into APL. And so sometimes I look at Q and other things like that that that's got some of this uh, uh, SQL like qu querying and sort of a, a bit more at your fingertips. Yeah, and uh, I think. Um, that will make for a powerful tool.